Former longtime Disney chairman and CEO Michael Eisner is getting in on the SPAC boom. Eisner disclosed today that his firm, the Tornante Company, will merge its stake in trading card pioneer tops into a SPAC created by well-known investor Jason Mudrick of Mudrick Capital. The transaction will see the return of tops to the public markets in a deal valued at $1.3 billion. Michael Eisner and Jason Mudrick join Yahoo Finance now. Good morning to you both. Congratulations uh, on the deal. Michael, I'll start with you here. So you took tops uh, private in 2007 for $385 million. Why do you why do you see now is the right time to bring it back to public markets? I think we're ready to go public. We've been running as a public company. We want a larger enterprise. Uh, over the course of the 14 years, we've really solidified our management. We're moving from an uh, analog company to a digital company. Uh, we have tremendous earnings, uh, great revenue, great cash flow. Uh, we'll be available to do M&A once we're public. Uh, it just seemed like the right time. Uh, and we decided this before this boom in, in blockchain, which doesn't hurt, to say the least. But uh, we're ready to go, and we're excited. Actually, uh, Tops is exactly the same financially as Disney was when I went in 1984. So we should do 10% of Disney as it's done. That would be very good. And then, Michael, why... You know, where is the business today? You know, how has it changed now compared to 2007? Well, it's a different business. It was an analog business completely. It was a cardboard company business and a confection business. And we're still a very strong confection business. Uh, it gives a great solidity to our earnings. You know, we're not a company that's uh, selling flying cars. We've been around for 80 years. But we had to uh, move into the digital space. Now we have instant gratification. Instead of sending out a, uh, a cardboard card where the stats change every six months, they now change at every swing of the bat. We're a big international company. We have a relationship with the Bundesliga and the Champions League and UEFA uh, around the world, uh, all sorts of different kinds of licenses and our own IP. And we're just a bigger company. And uh, the time has come to take advantage uh, and let the public join us. I've been private for 14 years. We had Madison Dearborn as our private equity partner. Uh, they have to exit for their own clients. And uh, we did it in a, in a situation which was flexible quickly. We didn't want to uh, burden our management with an endless process of a regular IPO. Uh, we were lucky that uh, we were, were now affiliated with Jason Mudrick. Uh, who will add sophistication in the capital markets for us. And, uh, you know, we're not Aluma, Illumina. Uh, we're not Snap. Uh, we don't have an infinite, we don't have an infinite uh, PE, but we're strong. And uh, we do look to the future with blockchain, which will give us the ability to participate in the secondary market. Right now, we distribute our cards, our analog cards, and even our digital cards, but mostly our analog cards, uh, in the uh, market where we only participate in that first sale. But now we'll be able to participate in the second sale and the third sale, which is, of course, much greater as long as we keep our what we deliver less than the demand for it in the primary market. Well, so far, that strategy seems to have worked well. One of our producers who is a fan of the genre is talking about the huge demand that we have seen over the past few years. Let's bring in Jason now. Um, Jason, you know, you you are known for a number of different things. One of them is um, distressed investments, which doesn't look like that this is an example of that. So I'm curious what drew you to Tops? Was it the opportunity to work with, uh, you know, a legendary CEO like Michael? Was it the the product itself? What what was it that that got you connected here? Yeah, well, look, this is not a distressed company by any means. Um, we looked at a lot of opportunities. What what really drew us to the Tops opportunity was the power of the brand. I mean, when we heard that Tops was looking to go public, the first thing I did was run home and dig out all my old baseball cards, which were in shoeboxes, you know, bur buried buried back in old shelves. And all the guys I work with here did the same thing. And I, we found ourselves sitting around the table the following day telling stories from 30 and 40 years ago. And it just got me thinking of the hundreds of companies that we look at every year. You, you rarely find a brand that has that powerful of an emotional connection 
um, with their consumers. And I really can't think of any. I mean, Michael refers to the the, the feeling he had when, when he joined Disney. You know, I've thought about Coca-Cola, but the Topps brand, I mean, the power that it has, you know, it is, is on the same level as multi-billion dollar companies. And this is a $500 million revenue company. So incredibly leverageable brand. You mentioned the management team and the sponsor, being able to work with somebody um, as iconic as Michael Eisner, it was very attractive to us. This is one of the best management teams that we've ever had the pleasure of getting to know. And probably the most important thing for us is we're value investors. And we did look at electronic vehicle companies. We looked at flying car companies. We couldn't wrap our heads around pre-revenue situations where the valuation was just justified by future projections that looked like a hockey stick. This is a company that did over a half a billion of revenues last year. That was up 20% year over year. Revenues are projected to go another grow another 20% this year. It does mid-teens uh, mid EBITDA margins, generates a tremendous amount of cash flow. So you can really underwrite this investment based on current financial performance and not future performance. And the current financial performance justifies the valuation. And then we get the continued move to digital for free, and we get the NFT for free. And that was particularly compelling to us. You know, and Jason, along those lines, thinking about the, the SPAC structure and the role it's played in capital markets over the last, you know, really six months or so, um, you know, you're outlining here kind of, I guess, when SPACs are positive and, and how you see SPACs as a beneficial, you know, kind of structure for companies rather than, you know, direct listing or traditional IPO or selling to, you know, private equity um, and, and how this contrasts certainly with, with some of that other, uh, those names you you made reference to in the direction of those other kind of SPAC companies that have come public on, on very much, you know, uh, pie in the sky projections, let's call them. Yeah, you know, look, not, not all SPAC deals are the same. Uh, we looked at a lot of them. We think this is an exceptional company. You know, in terms of why SPAC, you know, this was this was not very distracting for management. It's a much quicker path to being a public company. Um, so there, there's just a lot of reasons why this made sense for for Michael and for the company. Uh, and uh, you know, for us, you know, when we found Tops, for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, you know, we're not required to invest in the deal. You know, SPAC managers receive uh, effectively a promote. We receive founder shares if we can effectuate a deal. But what's very unique about this situation is we're, we're so excited about the opportunity. We've committed $100 million uh, via the pipe into the equity at 10.15 a share, which is the same price as everyone else. Um, and again, we're not required to do that. It will make us the second largest shareholder beh behind Michael. Uh, and Michael's not selling a share in the deal. So all of that, I think, makes this a very differentiated deal vis-a-vis -vis some of the other SPACs that you may be referring to. Michael, when will you launch NFTs? We launched them a year ago. We did an experiment with Garbage Pail, Pail Kids, which was our own IP, because we wanted to do it with something that wasn't a licensed product. And if it didn't work, they sold out immediately. Uh, we just put out Godzilla versus Kong, which is a big hit movie, came out on the weekend, uh, sold out instantly. Uh, we've been working on this a long time. We will be launching more of them with baseball, with uh, Formula One, with uh, the Bundesliga, with the Champions League. Uh, we are really into it. Now, we were into it before it became a fashion. We're into it because, as I said before, we want to participate in new technologies, secondary markets, and all the rest. We also want to make Tops a company that appeals to uh, teenagers as well as kids with the analog product from Walmart and Target and everybody else. So. We're looking at all sorts of things. We, we, we have the digital cards, not the blockchain, for about a decade. And that has been extremely popular. For instance, in baseball, we have a thing called Bunt, which is a digital card. It may have four sides instead of two. It may have video. It may have all sorts of uh, video effects on it. Uh, we've done things where we have artists, contemporary artists, put out uh, art on top of a card like a Mickey Mantle card from the past, and bring a new creativity to it. So we're a creative company, uh, and we're a, a well-run business. So between the two of them, uh, we hope to keep moving forward. To me, it's uh, interesting. And, and when you mentioned a distressed company, 
you know, that I have a lot of friends that, that, that I grew up with that are in distre- distressed situations. They're really smart. And they're not just doing distressed products. They just they understand the markets. So we're happy to have uh, Jason and his company uh, helping us work with us going forward. Michael, um, I can't resist asking you a bit about Disney. Um, you know, I, I, first of all, I'm curious if you're still a shareholder. Second of all, your successor, Bob Iger, do, not lasting as CEO quite as long as you did. I think your tenure was 20 years, and he's he's topping out around around 15, perhaps. But how do you think the company has done? How do you think they've done, especially navigating the pandemic and now pushing further into streaming and beyond? Well, I talked to Bob recently. I think the two of us together have managed the Disney company for like a quarter of its life. Uh, I, I Between ABC, which is now part of Disney, and being CEO, I was there t- 31 years. He is about the same or, or maybe a little bit less. Uh, I think he did a great job. The, the, the management that was there when I left is the same management, basically, that is still there, top management. Bob Chapek is an excellent CEO following Bob. Uh, yes, I am a shareholder and a very happy shareholder. Uh, I think their acquisition of, of Pixar was very smart. He was able to do what I couldn't get done with uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, and then Marvel, of course, and, and Star Wars. So I think they're, they're in good shape. Uh, Shanghai Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland, Hong Kong Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, Walt Disney World, the whole thing has that, that, that flavor of emotional connection the way Topps does. When, you, when somebody tells you about Topps, they tell you about how their mother threw out the cards that were under the bed. Somebody talks about their brother putting their Mickey Mouse 52 in his, the spikes of his bicycle and then running over a puddle. These are the same kinds of things I hear about, oh, I went to Disneyland as a kid. And my mother took me to Disneyland, and I loved it, and then I took my kids. This kind of Proustian remembrances of things past. When I say that, my wife says that's pretentious, but it's true. <laughs> and uh, I think that that emotional connection between these two companies is unique. So I feel as though having, you know, I've always worked at companies where I have fun, and it's an emotional connection to my life. I worked at ABC. I worked at Paramount. I worked for a long time at Disney and now Tops. All of these companies are not curing a disease. They are having fun and being creative. And that's, I don't know, I'm stuck in that route. Michael, you have me reflecting a bit. I still remember when you would introduce uh, Disney movies. That's certainly a part of my childhood. And I'm looking forward to, to going to Disney with my nieces at some point soon after the pandemic. But again, congrats on this deal. Michael Eisner and Jason Mudrick, good to see you both this morning. Thank you.